Hey everybody, it's July, it's hot, it's summer, it's 2024, and let's go ahead and take a look at what's new in the July 2024 release of Photoshop. Let's start with one of my favorite new tools, and it's a brand new brush tool. I love getting new tools in Photoshop, especially if they combine multiple functions that I used to have to do separately, and this is no exception. So I'm gonna switch over to the brand new adjustment brush. You might be saying, Terry, what's an adjustment brush? It's like having adjustment layers on a brush, combining multiple functions at the same time. So as soon as I switch to the tool, you'll notice that I get the pop-up choice of choosing which adjustment layer type I want to start with. So I'm gonna start with hue and saturation. I'm just gonna go ahead and start brushing a little bit of this eye here. And nothing's happening because I haven't made the adjustment yet. So as soon as I make the brush stroke, You'll notice that I get properties to be able to change the hue and saturation. I also get a new layer with that mask that just got created because of my brush stroke. So now I can literally just drag a slider and change the eye to whatever color I want quickly and easily. This will be a great boon and productivity boost to my retouching. Now, again, I can keep brushing. So it's gonna keep brushing that same adjustment over here and I can add a new adjustment and I can make as many of these as I need for my project. So that's quick and easily the new adjustment brush, which is, I like to say, adjustment layers on a brush. Now let's go ahead and zoom out. I'm gonna go ahead and go to a layer here that I have, uh, it's called blue suitcase. And you might be saying, Terry, you can't be possibly talking about suitcases after what just happened at the airports. And I was a part of that, I was stranded too. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive right into this. Uh, I got the suitcase selected and I uh, free transformed it. So command T, control T on Windows. And what that brings up in the new contextual taskbar are new controls for uh, rotating and flipping that selected object. So I wanna rotate, rotate the suitcase over that way and I wanna flip it horizontally and I can just quickly and easily do that right on the contextual taskbar without having to go find where it is in the menus or a different panel. So that just makes life a little easier. Now I'm gonna turn on a text layer. And with this text layer turned on, I'm gonna highlight part of the text with the type tool. And when I highlight part of this text, you might be saying, Terry, really, text? What are you gonna do here? I'm going to go into my paragraph panel and I'm gonna turn on something that's been a long time coming. You could even arguably say it's long overdue, it's about time. And that is the ability, get this, bullets and numbering now made, it way, made its way into Photoshop. It's been in every other tool we have just about, but now it's here in Photoshop. And you can say, yep, it took long enough, it's about time, but you know what, I, I'll welcome it. Because anytime I'm doing a numbered list, inevitably, I always forget something or something needs to be added and I have to renumber everything manually. Now I can just go in and say, hey, I meant to say for number three, it's Atlanta, which it really isn't because it's too hot in Atlanta in the summertime, but there it is, it's now number three, and no, this got renumbered to number four, and everything all the way down the list got renumbered automatically. And if I say, nope, I changed my mind, take number three out, it automatically makes Santorini number three again. So quickly, easily going in, and let's move our suitcase down, let's put it here, and let's go ahead and free transform that suitcase and make it bigger so that it makes it our background for that hard to read black text. All right, so with that said, that's uh, just a quick look at some of the new things with type and using bullets and numbering. Let's move on to another uh, new capability, and this is one that's also another new tool. Now, in the past, if I wanted to put something in this glass, I would have uh, made a selection and maybe and generated or added it as a composite, and then I would have to make it look like it's inside the glass. So earlier, I did a rectangular marquee selection and I just generated some strawberry slices and it didn't work out because <laughs> it just basically put the slices right in front of the glass. And it really got bad. It, it's just horrible. It doesn't, because it, it just doesn't know what I'm trying to do. It doesn't take the glass into account and what a glass of water looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that bad layer off because this is what I really want. I want it to actually look like it's inside the water. Now, how do you get that? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and turn or switch to my background layer. And I'm gonna grab a brand new brush. That's right, our second new brush tool, the selection brush. And a selection brush, unlike all the other selection tools, has something different. It has opacity. So right now the opacity defaulted to 100%. I'm gonna drop it down to 50. And now that it's 50%, when I do a brush stroke with this tool, 
it's now a 50% intense selection. So if I, I can even change it after the fact. I say, hey, you know what? I did that stroke at 50, make this one 60. So now when I do another stroke, that one's going to be at 60%. Uh, again, a little darker. So you can even see the difference in the pink there. But it treats it all as one selection. So when I go to generative fill and I type in strawberry slices and hit generate, it's going to generate it with that intensity or opacity of the selection in mind, even if I varied it from 50 to 60%. And I get that look and feel. So over here, it's a little softer. Over here, it's a little stronger, where I told it to be more intense. And it's just really cool to get those effects. Now, easily, if you need to put something in the water behind glass or anything like that, you can use the new selection brush, which kind of combines the old quick mask and using the brush tool and masking certain things and inverting and all of that, it does it all for you with a new brush. So uh, that's the new selection brush. Last but not least, we have a new text to image panel built into Photoshop. And what this is for is for people that need to create and ideate elements for compositing. So for example, if I hit generate image, I get kind of the Firefly website built right in now. So I, I'm a photographer, so I shoot my own images, but as a graphic designer, you might need to composite images that you just don't have access to. So for example, I'm gonna do summer day at the beach uh, with a bright um, uh, beach umbrella. All right, now, before I just generate that, I'm gonna choose that I want it to be a photo instead of art, but more importantly, I want it to look a certain way. I did take a photo on the beach that I do want it to look like, be in the style of. So here's my photo from Maui a couple weeks ago. And that's that kind of time of day, like late afternoon, early evening, uh, beautiful sun setting on the beach there, just the way I want it to look. So now we'll go ahead and open that up and that becomes our reference image. So now when I generate this scene for my composite, for my elements that I wanna to put together, it will generate it based on the look and feel and style of my photography, my photo. So now I get that time of day, I get that look of the water, I get that even the light and sun placement, and I get more importantly, the beach umbrella that I need. So now I can just keep compositing, I can keep building on this and adding the elements, whether they're elements I shot or elements that I want to generate or elements from Adobe Stock, Whatever I need, I can just keep building on this. Illustrations, text, so forth and so on until I get my final piece. So with that said, those are the new features for the July 2024 update of Photoshop. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.